Hey, and welcome back to the channel. My name is James Thomas, and if you're new here, we are a photography-based channel. We talk about photo tips and tricks, some basics in videography. We talk about how you can turn your hobby of photography into a business, because unless you are doing this as a hobby and you have no intention of ever making money from your photography, then you may not want to be here. But I assume that everyone who is into photography has the plan at some point or another to actually start making money from their photography. So today's video is going to be about how you can be more productive as a photographer. The reason that we are talking about this is because when you begin to have more clients or when you begin to start getting known in your local area, you're going to want to be better at your time management. You're also going to want to be more productive and planning out your shooting, planning out the times you're going to edit and all of the things that go along with it. Because if you are not being productive and maximizing the time that you have, then you are not going to be able to turn your hobby into a photo business. So let's hop in with the first one. If you see me looking down, it's because I have some notes here to help me stay on track. So the first thing that I would like to suggest is that everyone go ahead and get a whiteboard or maybe a journal. Me personally, I have a whiteboard in my office, which is actually directly behind the camera because I like to come into my office and look at my board and see what I have to do for the day or what my to-do list is for the month. The way that I have my board split up and I also have it in my journal as well, is I have the weekly, daily, and monthly goals that I wish to complete as it involves with my daily life, my play life, which is like, you know, I wanna go watch a movie with my family. Although, of course, no one is going to the cinema right now because of everything that's going on. You know, it is what it is. But, and then my work. I try not to put my actual work on there, just the things that I see that I need to do for my business, such as planning out a shoot if I have a client coming up, scheduling shoots, of course, with potential clients. Uh, making these YouTube videos actually goes in there as well because I have to plan out when I'm gonna have time to actually knock these videos out. So that is the first thing, the first tip that I'm gonna give you on that. And that is to get you a whiteboard or a journal so you can start organizing how you plan on doing business or how you plan on being more productive so you can get the most out of the time that you do have because i do understand that some of us have day jobs that we need to do and i understand that some of us has families that we have to deal with on a regular basis not deal with but you know take care of you have kids you have family that you just need to be around you can't dedicate all of your time to producing videos or producing or shooting for the rest of your life or rest of your time that you have free. And if you are, if you do have a day job, understand that once you get off of work, that you are going to be putting in these extra hours. So you want to make sure that you're not taking up all of your free time to dedicate to a side business. But you do need to take some time to dedicate to your side business. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to be a hobby. So the next thing I want to talk about kind of goes along with it and that is to have a planner or a calendar because some people like to plan by day some people like to plan by hour i personally like to plan by day and i use a planner slash calendar basically the same thing if you ask me and i like to plan by day so on monday wednesday and friday i plan out on monday i plan out the shoots that i'm going to do whether it is during the week on a weekend or whenever it is I plan it out, I communicate with the client so we can have some type of inspiration on what it is that we're going to shoot. And on Wednesday, after I have planned everything out with the client, I take some time to actually think about, not that much time, but I actually take the time to think about what poses we can do, finding locations and all of that if it has not already been picked by the client themselves. and then on fridays i like to plan out my editing schedule or i like to actually go ahead and start editing depending on when i actually do my shoots i try to take time out to plan when i'm going to edit when i'm going to sort through everything so i can get the client their edits as soon as i possibly can without having them wait too long 
especially on those bigger orders where the client orders a lot of images. I don't want to have them waiting like a month or two for some images, especially the ones that are just digital images. Obviously, you have to communicate with your clients when you have print orders. They have to understand that it's going to take a little bit longer for them to get their order. Anyways, that is pretty much all I have on that. But like I said, this video is about being productive as a photographer or anyone really. So hopefully more than just photographers watch this video because productivity is going to help any business in any industry, no matter what it is. So the next thing is going to be organizing your tasks. The reason I put this on this list is because I read the book called Eat That Frog and it made it very clear on how you can be more productive, which is just writing down all the tasks that you need to do for the day, like I said, for you know, using your whiteboard or your journal. It's very not everything that you need to do for the day, and then you're gonna organize those tasks so you don't have the things that don't need to be done right away at the top of the list, and then you realize at the end of the day you don't have time to do what was most important on that list. So you're gonna organize your list. So the most important thing, the thing that needs to be done first is at the top of the list. That way you see it, you realize, hey, this is important. Let me knock it out now. Once you have it knocked out, then you can go down the list. I understand that a lot of people are gonna say the opposite of everything I just said. They're gonna to wanna to be like, hey, maybe you should do the small task first. That way you have you know, that inner feeling of a small win and you can just keep pushing throughout your task. But when it comes to being productive and when it comes to your photography business, I believe that it's important that you have your most important task knocked out that way, let's say you have edits that you need to deliver to your client and you set a deadline for yourself. When you originally met with the client, you set a deadline for, let's say a week. You're coming up at the end, you're coming up on that week. You're coming up on that deadline. What you don't wanna do is have all 100 edits. The number I know is way the hell out there, but you get what I mean. You have a shit ton of edits that you need to do, but you wait until the end to do them and you realize that you don't have enough time to actually complete which can bring you back and get you in a position where you have to explain to your client hey i'm not going to be able to deliver on the promise i'm not going to be able to get you these images by the end of today because you decided you were going to procrastinate and not do the images on time for them so it's very important that you go ahead and organize the tasks that you need to do, whether it is daily, weekly, or monthly, or yearly. So I know some people plan out their shoots years in advance, which, you know, is a good thing because you can plan them out. You can have everything good to go. I like to plan my shoots on a quarterly basis just because that's what I personally can handle. I don't think I can plan out a year or two in advance for my shoots because you never know what can happen for example you had a shoot planned somewhere overseas for example the chances of you being able to execute that when you know the whole virus thing going on was at its prime which i'm not really sure that's not still at its prime but you get what i mean when it was at its peak you probably weren't going to be taking a photo shoot that you planned a year ago to europe right now I mean, I understand that your clients will probably understand and they will probably be okay with it, but I don't like the plan so far ahead that I can't execute everything that I planned. So the next thing that I would like to talk about is having a routine. It doesn't matter if you are just trying to get into a morning routine, you're just trying to have a daily routine that you do. Maybe you wake up, you decide that you're going to meditate, have some coffee, hop straight into editing, skip breakfast. I say that because I do that quite often before I carry along the rest of my day. But just have some type of routine so you can actually plan out your days better and understand the time that you have to dedicate to shooting, dedicate to um, shoot planning, dedicate to editing. The same as any other thing that you do. So you know some people um, in the financial realm, they say, hey, every dollar has to have its on job every dollar needs to have its role so when it comes to being productive as a photographer or any other industry like i said before it's going to be important that you designate time so each hour that is not your free time has some type of task to go along with it because you do not want so much time that you're just you know rambling or not rambling 
you don't want to have so much time that you're just putting countless hours, countless hours into your editing. For example, if you know that you only have two hours to edit a day, set a timer, turn off your phone, or not turn off your phone, but turn off your notifications and all of that so you can dedicate those two hours to editing your photos and you're not distracted. When you're distracted and you're like, you know what you can do in two hours, when you're distracted, that two hours can turn into three hours and then you just waste it. Some of the time that you could have committed to finishing out the task that you have, finishing out the task that you have dedicated to editing or dedicated the time to editing. You get what I mean. You can complete the task within the time that you have set for that task instead of, oh, I was doing all this other stuff. I was distracted. So I'm just going to add another hour. I'm going to add another two hours to this task. So I am able to complete the goal that I have set for myself for today. And the last thing that I would like to talk about is just knowing what your time is worth and knowing how to use the time that you have to its fullest potential. So with that being said, the reason I bring that up is because I was actually finishing this book for maybe I think the third time was Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk. So in the book, of course, this is back in like, I think the book was written in like 2019. I'm not really sure. I can probably check, but eh, it's for another time. But in the book, he says, because the book is mostly about, you know, social media and building your personal brand and, you know, creating some type of presence online. So in the book, he mentions how if it's something that you want to do and you want to build your personal brand, you need to spend countless hours, or not countless hours, but you need to dedicate like hours upon hours and upon hours to actually building your personal brand, which is true in all things. So when you do have that downtime, you know, I don't care if you're on the toilet and you have some downtime, you just whip out your phone, go on your favorite social media platform and you just start commenting and liking and all of this. But when you do do that, you have to understand that you need to provide some type of value for these comments that you're leaving. Don't go and be like fire or don't go and put the little heart, heart eyes, smiley faces because that doesn't provide value for anyone. So for example, if you're a photographer, don't go to another photographer and put on his or hers comment and be like, oh, this shot is fire. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna actually go in, look at the image and provide some type of valuable content or some type of valuable comment. And be like, hey, I like the composition of this. The use of leading lines is great. The photo is amazing for X, Y, and Z reason. And that's gonna actually help you grow your personal brand, grow your presence online. I know that's not really along the lines of productivity, but when it comes to your free time, why not get some type of mindless task that you can go ahead and do while you have that free time? It is being productive, but it is not taken away from your productive task, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, go ahead and leave a comment below because I can answer any questions and I do answer all comments. So that is actually all that I have for you now. If this is a video that you like, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And if you wish to see more from me, go ahead and click the bell notification and you will be notified anytime that I release a new video. Until next time.